Ferrari, 355 Cabriolet. What's up? I have a ridiculous house in the South Fork. I have every toy you can possibly imagine. And best of all, kids, I am liquid. So, now you know what's possible. Let me tell you what's required. Life advice, rr at gmail.com, life advice. Okay, so we've had a lot of uh, reaction to the pull-up. I don't even want to call it a controversy here on the podcast, but uh, it just kind of turns into the CrossFit world getting mad about their pull-ups not being respected. Um, but I, then it can turn into something else where it's like, hey, some people think I've been very respectful of CrossFit. Other people think I've been dismissive. I will say this. If you are in there putting in the work, I have all the respect in the world for you. I mean, unless you take forever on shit and don't put stuff back, like this girl in the squat rack in Maui who took 45 minutes, had every single brace imaginable, some weird ankle thing that was going on, knee brace, uh, competition belt. She also had the iPhone tripod camera thing to get at all different angles. We're talking five minute rest for one rep. Um, took up the entire rack, the only rack that was there. And I started saying, hey, man, it's starting to bother you. It's starting to now impact your workout. And you don't want that. That's not who you are, right? Worry about your own reps. That's what we say in the podcast all the time. And I was like, look, just focus on something else. You're not doing squats today. But today's her day. And then, I don't know, 35, 45 minutes later when she was finally done. And I'm no, no exaggeration. It was one of the worst hoggings of a squat rack I've ever, ever seen. And again, people can kind of, pitch a 10 at the squat rack now with, with the way things go and focus on that, you know, movement, which is great. You know, congrats to everybody. Uh, and then a guy walked right into it to curl. And I went, you know what? This is actually perfect. There's one squat rack here. He waited that whole time. I was, but I'd already focused. I was like, I just got to go do something else. It's not going to happen for me today. So, uh, like I said, even she was in there making it happen. And so I, I think I'm respectful about it, but the, the, the pull up thing is just nobody, I don't know. I, I, I'll read. I'll read one here. Former Marine, twenty nine six one two twenty five. Classic dad bod. Look like I lift, but I, uh, but don't run because it's true. Bad knees. Okay. Anyway, I wanted to comment on Ryan saying thirty pull ups is a ton. Thirty normal pull ups is like there's almost no one walking around that can do thirty t- total pull ups. Jeremy Scott, our fitness guy, heard about the pull up controversy. He reached out to me where I think we actually ended up giving each other our max pull-up numbers, which we said we weren't going to do, but we did, um, and that the movement is completely different, and that it's not even close to the same thing. Uh, I think he said he got to 26 at one point at 210 pounds. He's also a fitness model who's like a real one and really good at it. So um, he goes, there's also not many people keeping track of him. I don't know. The emails would tell us differently that people are keeping track of these. So our guy said... I spent five years in the Marine Corps after I dropped out of college. Marines have this thing called a physical fitness test. It's broken down into three events, three-mile run, pull-ups, and crunches. Each event's worth 100 points, so logically a perfect score is 300. Everyone gets full points on the crunches because it's a joke. No one gets full points on the run because that means three miles in 18 minutes. No one does? That actually surprised me. Like There aren't some Marines that are going to run an 18-minute, three-mile deal. I mean, obviously the math there is six minutes each um there's going to be some guys i, I don't even want to get too deep into it because then it's going to turn into how many guys can actually do three miles in 18 minutes uh congrats to you we don't need an email on it whoever you are um why would i ever need to run three miles in a t-shirt on a battlefield that's a whole different conversation although i do know that there was this one seal test that i think i was like hey let me see how many of these i could do and there were some things in there i was like that's never ever going to happen and then i thought one of them was a sprint for 10 minutes so whatever you could do, full max, like clearly not a 100-yard dash, but the idea being if something really went down, you would have to be able to run in one direction for 10 minutes at whatever pace you could keep. There was also a rowing part of it, too, that I actually tried to get. Um, it was, I think, 7,000 meters in a certain amount of time. Uh, that didn't happen for me. And then there's a couple other things. I was like, that's cool. I could do 20% of these. Um, I did not sign up for the SEALs, though, based on that. All right, so we're rambling here a bit, but it's been a bit. All right, so now the pull-ups. A perfect score is 20 for the Marine test. A perfect score is 20. So an organization that prides itself on fitness and being the best says the perfect Marine can do 20 dead hang pull-ups. When I was ultra motivated, I could do 26. See, this is awesome. Guys are like, yeah, this is a great number. By the way, I broke it. So saying that any random dude in the street couldn't do 30 is probably the most accurate thing Ryan's ever said. I actually don't know that there was a ton of people saying that they could do 30. Um, but for the CrossFit people that think I was being dismissive, I just, the pull-up is not the same. I think it kind of stems back to, I think Saruti can help us with this. 
Will Kane, this is what it was. Will Kane was like, I, there's going to be something I can beat you at physically. And I was like, hey, I, I, didn't, I haven't thought about it ever. And Will was like, and you got to know Will. Will's, Will's the kind of guy you don't think is going to punch anybody in a fight. And Will's going to punch you. He may get his ass kicked, but Will will punch you. And that's what I learned about Will and respect him a little bit. So he'd have a thing with me a little bit. Be like, I can't get you in this. I can't beat you in this. I was like, dude, you played water polo. I would drown before I'd be able to do that. And, you know, lifeguard certified, not a big deal. 17 years old. Don't know if that certification is lifelong or if they revisit that one. But um, he was like, I think I can get you pull-ups. And then that's what happened with the Hasselbeck thing. And that's why this whole pull-up thing has even gone on. And honestly, I can't believe I spent this much time on it. So now let's I, I, go ahead, Saruti. But now I, I regret going this long. I just can we get a definitive answer on the like what whether CrossFit's good for you or not? I feel like there's this contingency of people who just say, oh, it's terrible for your body. You shouldn't do it. But then there's a bunch of people that are in really good shape. So I a don't, guy like me, I have no idea. I don't know. I don't want to do it because we're going to get a ton of emails where people are saying it's great because it is about the specific movements that are power and strength and the pace of it. And you're in and you're out. And then there's other people saying the chiropractor business has never been stronger between bird scooters and CrossFit. So, you know. They both are going to make really strong arguments. It gets back to my original point. If you're in there doing anything good for you because you're way ahead of most people, just this is it. The pull-up thing is being put to bed. And for those who don't know, just YouTube what the pull-ups are. Um, you're like just, flailing your legs around. Like that's the problem. Like, I, I'm, I'm not trying to yeah. take a side here, but I will say like if you're working out and you're getting the heart rate up, good for you. If it's, if it's CrossFit, happy for you. It's good. Your, your heart health is important. But if you're flailing your legs around and you're saying you're doing 30 pull-ups, I just feel like that's not, there should be like an asterisk there, right? That's just not, that's not a real push-up or pull-up. Yeah. Uh, people are going to come back at you with, hey, it's a different movement. It's a different exercise. You guys are looking at it wrong. It's not exactly the same thing. I just think there's some guys out there and it's the same thing with the box jumps that everybody screws up. You stack up like, you know, five feet worth of height and then you lift your legs up and the people are like, holy shit, have you, have you seen this guy's vert? And you're like, eh. That's not it. So I think we've covered this too much. I, I actually needed to stop and apologize to people for being repetitive on it because I, I just got too sidetracked, but I couldn't help myself. Okay. What's your pull-up number real quick, though? Do you have you, you offered um, up uh, Jeremy's, but what was yours? You're not really built for pull-ups. No, but I got 20 at 225. That's pretty good. So not bad. Not bad. You know what? I'll check in. You know what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll build tour it and ruin the rest of the workout. And I'll I'll try next week at like you know, you never know if I'm at 230 or 225, but I'll see. I'll see how many I can do for the podcast. You should get on IG live and do that. Be a good call. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then people can can, can talk about my <laughs> form and um, then DM me, you know, that they can help and, and all these different things. You're like, you know, what? we're doing all right. We're not worried about it. All right. Uh, Kyle, I, I imagine you have no. Did you are you still awake? Kyle is probably the better question. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Didn't okay. really have much to say. Um, I just, I guess CrossFit is sort of like, it is what, like, I don't want to sound like an idiot like I did with the HOA thing, but like, is it like, is CrossFit like uh, just sort of a school of thought or is it like... It's um, just training style. Is and it like your local it's... HOA, your local CrossFit? I don't know. No, I, I mean, for some people, dude, some of these people that are doing this and the amount of shit they put themselves through and how many changes of like how different the exercises and the number that they're trying to do in a short amount of time. It's insane how impressive. So it's like, so, yeah, it's unorthodox, dude. basically. It's just un anything that's like unorthodox is CrossFit. No, I wouldn't. No, that's not what it is. Actually, a lot of the stuff's very traditional. But what it is, is it's combining these different movements in a very short amount of time. Like if you ever watch these competitions and you look at what these people are doing and you can see the veins behind their eight pack, like, you know, and some of the women, how strong and and the endurance level, it's yeah, you know, I'm not going to sit here and sound like an asshole just because I don't like the pull-ups. I have a ton of respect for those people. So there you go. Let's get to a couple dudes asking about stuff. Six feet, 180. Uh, mostly body weight stuff at home, though. Sucks. Always a big fan of the show. Was hoping to get your thoughts on this. After A couple of years after college, I moved um, to the States for a job. So I think our guy lives somewhere else, obviously, but I don't think he says where. Okay. White collar, good pay, prospects, et cetera. After I moved, I mostly lost touch with my buddies from back home, smallish town, in particular, my best friend since like fourth grade. It wasn't anything personal. Our lives just moved in separate directions. The society is pretty terrible about teaching guys how to check in, talk to each other just casually. I think I tried calling him once just to say what up, but it was awkward. And I didn't really try again. Um, I think he makes a great point there about, I don't think society it's on them to say, hey, guys, be better to each other. 
But I just think, you know, some of our wiring is the way it is. And it's probably never going to change no matter how many posters or specials you want to do. Um, guys handle being friends with each other differently than women do. Women are better at it. Last time I visited back home for Christmas pre-COVID, I made a big effort to hang out with the multiple texts, et cetera. He responded with stuff like, yeah, sure, and definitely, but then was always busy whenever I tried to actually make plans and he never offered alternatives. I eventually got the message that he wasn't down to see me, so I stopped trying. He must have heard through the grapevine I'm visiting again soon because he actually texted me out of the blue to say we should hang out when I get into town. Part of me thinks, yeah, sure, we can grab a beer, but another part of me wants to keep my pride because I tried last time and he basically ghosted me. It sounds messed up, but I don't really have a lot of gain from the relationship. Our interests are different. We're in totally different careers. He's more blue collar, like a lot of folks back home. Should I hang out with him or just let it go? I'm curious if you had to deal with this. I would, I could tell you're not from the States, but I would, I would have thought if you didn't give me some hints there that you were from Boston, because this is a classic thing with our Boston group of guys. Be like, Hey, are you going into town? Yeah. Did you hit up guys? Be like, yep. Did you hear from anybody? Nope. Um, and you just accept it. Uh, this feels like Australia, maybe Hull for the North water fans out there. Uh, you're making a bigger deal out of this than you should. What you're not doing, even though I get your point, um, when it comes to guys, but you don't know, or you didn't share with us, like maybe that was a really bad stretch for that guy. For some reason you don't even know, you know, try to think about the other person sometimes with this. So if you cared enough to be bothered about this and this one time where you were back home and he kind of blew you off. I, if it were happening for years and he, and it went, you went oh for five on every time you asked him to do something, then that's fine. And you can move on. But if you're as close as you're saying you are, despite whatever your career paths and locations are now, uh, you care about this person. So wouldn't it be way better just to get back together with him, ask what's up. And then maybe after a few beers, you could say, Hey, last time I came through, was anything going on? Because I didn't hear from you. And it could be as simple as a stupid misunderstanding or maybe something was going on with his family. So try not to always think about these things as the decision is always about you when a lot of times the decisions can be made that involve you that have nothing to do with you. So this is a very minor one. And again, like I said, if you care enough to even write an email about all this stuff, you clearly would like to repair whatever the relationship was. So th the pride part, like this guy didn't sleep with your wife. He blew you off around Christmas once. So I would say, let that go. But I also am somebody who is at least with my friends, I'm very forgiving or just, you know, like, Hey man, whatever. Like, you know, we had a bad year for our friendship and, and you want to hang out. Yeah. All right, cool. Like I liked hanging out with you at some point enough to still stay in touch with you 20 years later after college. Like there's plenty of guys from college where it's like, Oh, Hey, I was supposed to come see you here. I was supposed to do this, all this and that. And then it doesn't work out. And it's like, well, so that when I do deny myself of having fun with that guy that I actually enjoy hanging out with because something didn't work out one time. I mean, that's actually, I think a big overreaction. And I would say hit him up for that beer next time you're in Perth. Totally nailed it. I don't have anything to say other than you're right. Just when I would come back from school and stuff and even come back from, um, California was just like people got lives a lot of my friends had kids early and even the ones that didn't like you know they work two jobs or whatever and it was just like you can't you can't be worried about like you it just didn't work out and you'll be a lot happier if you don't take things like that so personally and then just you know get in where you fit in dude yeah you should give him a second shot because he texted you back if he didn't text you back you live you know you live your life and you forget about it but I don't know you still like this guy and you want to you know there's some sort of relationship to be had there try it out if he burns you again then you never have to you have to worry about it for the rest of your life yeah, I mean, it does seem like the emailer here is indifferent enough where if you ended up ending the friendship, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I don't know. I think that's an easy one. Uh, it would be an easy one. Sometimes the best thing is to not overthink of it or over overthink ever like, oh, why and all these different like, you know, how many times there's times where you'll think like, oh, this guy doesn't like me because of this thing. And then you get in your own head about it and then you start creating this whole fucking storyline that's not even real. It's fiction. And then. You know, a year can go by and get to the bottom of it. Look, there's a guy who worked on college game day on the television side who I thought hated me for whatever reason. And so then, of course, I'm like, fuck that guy then. And we, we'd stare each other down. It went on for like almost two years. And I even said to somebody, I'm like, that guy's what's his deal? Like, I know he doesn't like me. Like, I don't know what the hell I could have ever done to that guy. And then he was like, do you realize that guy's like one of the shyest guys going? And if you ever talk to him for two minutes, you guys would be completely like you would immediately like each other. So then I made the effort the next time 
because it had gotten so awkward. It was like, oh, Rosillo's like looking at me and then I'm looking at him and he never talks to me. And I just took one small interaction and turned it into something else. And again, I would always be, I could always work myself up into quite a lather when I felt like I was being dissed at ESPN. But I then talked to him and he ended up being one of the best guys I've ever known that worked at the company. I mean, it wasn't like we were summering together after that, but it was like a complete overreaction to one simple transaction that he and I had that went bad. And then I was like, oh, okay. And that was the starting point. And then I created this whole version of it that wasn't even fucking true. So again, that's a bigger lesson for other people and other stuff that's far more extreme than anything that's going on here now. But we all could do a better job of like not letting something grow inside of us that ends up being this fictional novel about what's going on with you and somebody else in your life or where you work or, you know, even, even, even at the gym. So I don't know. It sounds like you want to jump back in through because I got one more. No, I just love the idea of you and this other random dude just like throwing looks at each other, thinking that the other one's going to start something and actually you end up becoming friends. That's kind of like Twitter in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. Except they never have to see each other. <laughs> <That's true>. uh, <laughs> it's kind of like the person that responds after the guy tells you you're a fucking moron. He's like, oh, man, I love your show. You're like, I had more respect for you. You just didn't like me. <laughs> yeah. Just tell me you don't like me. I don't care. Yeah. The guys that do that, I think, are way worse than the guys that just be like, no, I still hate you and your show suck. OK, respect. All right. This is a longer deal here, but probably more important. It's titled the guy's name. So I, I don't know if he changed the name here. Um, I'm just going to change the name. I'm probably going to mess it up because his name comes up a million times. Let's call him Sam. Uh, it's called Sam the Sometimes Fuckhead. Uh, male 37, 175. Four to five times 30 minute cardio weekly. All right. Daily light kettlebells. Cool. Um, wants more fly fishing content. Not sure what to tell you. In a fantasy football league with mostly homies from high school, started in 05, 12 dudes. We're all doing pretty well. Some better than others, obviously, but obviously no dead weight. Financially speaking, every year late August, we have a destination draft and golf trip. I hear about this. A lot of guys do this. Good for you. 10 of the 12 are relatively tight. Two aren't necessarily outcasts, but have just maintained distance over the years. No issues there. Good dudes, but just don't often come around. Might see them at weddings. One of the 10 core dudes, let's call him Sam, is what you would call the wild card. With Sam, you never really know what you're going to get. Could be a great round of golf, few beers, relatively chill, or it could be, uh, and this year, this was years ago, unknown amounts of substances, booze and Xanax, a fist through a window, 25 stitches, months of physical therapy, or as recently seen, lots of just being a plain asshole. Being around Sam is like hiring a new guide at a fly shop. Could be a great day or total dog shit. Very little middle ground. That's actually now I understand the fly fishing request. It should be noted that when Sam got married, he moved 1,500 miles away from the core group. We really only see him at our draft. So he looks forward to seeing all of us once per year. And it seems to be inevitable that he just can't control himself with the booze or whatever else around and turns into the close talking prick none of us want to be around. Yeah, that's a really good factor there. He's, he's the one guy that moved away from everybody else. Like he looks forward to this weekend and wants to smash about 20 weekends into one weekend. So that's probably part of the problem. Um, three to four, maybe years ago, a group text was started without Sam, much like in real life. Sam's text can be overwhelming and too much to deal with. So we started a, a Samless group text that would forego any unsolicited input from him. This is extremely helpful when planning group get togethers like the draft in any situation that benefits from a salient adult decision uh, from salient to adult decision making. Last night, after Sam had been in the Red Bull and vodka since his 9 a.m. flight, he showed up to the Airbnb in one of his notorious close talking fingers and chest moods. See, he sent pics of this. He was he was right up in our other guy's grill here. Uh, Sam is the ball. one of our buddies, the most laid back of all of us, lost it on him, smacked the F out of him. Told him about the group text without him. Let Sam know that he wasn't the same anymore and hasn't been for a while. He's been crying and pitching fits in person and individually to each of us in texts. Deep down, we all love Sam. We've known him since we were kids. In some cases in preschool, we know his family. They're all first-class humans. We have some fond memories with Sam. But where do we go from here? Cat is out of the bag. He's obviously hurt more than anything. We feel bad for him. We definitely don't want to see him spiral. Um, so there you go. Uh, it sounds like, I, I think the big, the, the big thing that you're working here, the foundation of it is, is deep down, we all love him, right? You said that. So this guy matters to you, but this could be 
you would hope and you know just depends i mean sometimes it is the case and sometimes it isn't it just gets worse you would hope that the realization that hey you suck enough right now dude to the point where we have a whole nother operating procedure without you and again being left off a thread if you think there isn't one can be kind of like a a wake-up call like whoa you guys have a whole other thread without me and you know everything he's doing here is his fault like we all have the 9 a.m red bull vodka get on the flight guy because he's finally getting away from his family and you know you can do it a few times but if you're the lock like vegas doesn't even offer it on the board that you're going to be that guy every single time the boys get together and you don't keep it together. I mean, it's one thing to be a mess, but then you're also doing stupid shit all of the time. It's just going to wear on people. And even a person with moderate intelligence has to admit, like, hey, I'm the one doing this. Like, I'm the one, like, my actions led to this decision. And again, being left off a test, text thread is far more lenient than all of you guys just saying, hey, dude, we love you. We grew up together, care about your families and all the stuff that you point out. We just don't want to hang. You guys are still hanging out. With me. So really, I'd, I'd ask like what your goal is here. Do you never want to hang out? It doesn't seem you're not saying anything about never wanting to hang out with them again, but it it, it sucks. And by the way, as I scroll down, um, they sent this email in. And then later that day, he put a golf cart in a tree with a picture. Yep, and there it is. Golf cart in the tree. So they sent that email the day of? I don't know. Seems to be a little too convenient. They sent the email the day, like you sent an email while you were heading out to this trip? Boy, this is either really bothering you or you were hoping to get this email read and then laugh about it during the weekend. I don't know. Um, or maybe you were revealing enough here that he was going to know this. I, I don't know. I know that's weird, but there's a golf cart in a tree. Uh, yeah, you get to a certain age and it's kind of, it just stops being funny anymore. You know, fucking up golf carts, even though now I look at it and think, hey, that's somebody's business and who the hell are any of us to do that kind of shit. In your 20s, you laugh about it. It's just the way guys are. You know, unless you grew up around golf courses where we had one friend that was like, hey, can you be a little respective of the course? And we're all 21 and shit faced at senior week going, loser. And he was right. But in our 20s, like that guy wasn't going to be right. Some guys is going to go to in your 30s. I would say by the time you're in your 40s, people are just like, look, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. So um, let's just hope that, that that text realization, as much as he cried about it and all that kind of stuff, maybe he gets on that flight home after that weekend and it sinks in a little bit. Or maybe he follows up with one of the guys in the core group that he's closest with and be like, hey, you can give me the lowdown. I'll let me know what's going on. Or it's not going to be enough of a wake up call and he's not going to give a shit. And he's going to continue to spiral and get worse and worse at all these events. I don't know. I can't predict the future on that one. Kyle? I mean, this really comes down to that fucking guy who let him know about the whole thing. I mean, he's like only a small part of this email, but God damn it, dude, you really fucked everything up. I Did mean, he or was that great that he actually said it? See, I'm you're right, because I didn't really look at it that way. But you might you might be like, would you have rather him just never have known if this was your group of friends and you guys continue on this and there's never any hinting at like, hey, the way you carry yourself sometimes really sucks. And this is what it's led to. No, like I don't like that. I'd rather they just keep him in that group chat and talk shit about him in it. Like if they're like <laughs> that kind, if they're that kind of guys, like that's the kind of guys I hang out with. Like they're like, oh yeah, you're fucking fat, dude. Like that's like, that's the stuff that, that we nice. do. No, it's not nice, but my friends aren't nice, but we love each other and we hang out all the time. So I don't know. I think um, it's, it's a sticky situation, but I think if like, if like friendship is like important and it kind of conquers all and you guys want to keep this thing together, like just... I don't know. Just like it's now it's out in the open. Like just talk about it. Like it's like a thing that everybody knows about now. I don't know. Maybe that's bad advice, but that's like how I'd prefer to do it. I I'm with you actually, Kyle. That's my first thought is this, this other guy's creating a necessary drama that the rest of the friend group didn't necessarily want to be in. And now they have to sort of like patch this thing up and figure out, you know, what to do with the guy they actually still like and don't want to not be friends with. So I just, I don't know. I think that guy kind of overstepped his bounds, but it's also just, it's a separate text thread. I feel like every friend group has, like little niches of separate sort of people. Like we've got a group of five, we've got a group, you know, of there are three of us are on it. There are two of us are on it. There are four of us have on one. It just depends on what the topic of conversation is. It's not that big of a deal. So I kind of feel like you can, you can, this thing could blow over pretty easily. I don't know if it'll be a wake up call for the guy at all, but I don't think it's like, a, it's not a friendship ender. Like he could just, you know, just kind of get over it. Look, we had, we had a friend in the group, um, you know, we're going to run through it in college, uh, came by the house, put on football pads, 
smashed his body through a soda machine that had beer in it. Cool party, college. And we watched him destroy himself and the soda machine at three in the morning. And we thought it was funny. Um, later on, he went down a spiral staircase a couple years later in the town we were in drunk in the middle of the day and was naked down the spiral staircase. And there was families in there. And a lot of us still thought it was funny. And a guy who was a local finance guy did not think it was funny because he's like, I can't be seen with you anymore. Like I'm doing 401ks with people in town and you're naked in the middle of a day at like a restaurant. Um, some of us still thought it was funny and then it kept happening and it was on and then it was getting less funny and less funny, and less funny. And there was like some pushback. We're like, oh, well, you think what I did was bad. And like, how about, you know, this, this, and then you just be like, okay, that's fine, dude. Like, that's fine. But like, if you think whatever everybody else in the friend group has done is the same as some of the shit you're doing, like you're just, you're only lying to yourself in this. Like, there's not even, there's no debate on any of this stuff. And then we'll look back at it now and we just go, oh, and you know, unfortunately there was never really a moment where, uh, the guy was like, Hey, I can't, I can't do this stuff anymore. You know? And, and I don't, I mean, that's, that's just a different topic altogether, probably on, on kind of where, where guys are at and how they're wired with, with certain stuff. But there's a very clear line you can see as you get older, trust me on this one of where, there's always going to be a guy that thinks the stuff they did in the past still holds up. And most people are going to be like, look, this just isn't fucking funny anymore. Like it just isn't. And there's guys that can get away with it at an older age if it's not part of their DNA. But if it's, if it's all the time, if it's every get together, your friends as you get older are just, just not going to think it's cool. Like there's, there's just not. And some guys, it takes them a really long time to learn that. Uh, there's, there's a real wake up call when you graduate from college and you're like actually in the normal adult world and you're telling stories from college. And all of a sudden you realize like coworkers that are a few years older than you are like, why are you telling that story at work? Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And you're like, oh, I just, I don't know, 22. I thought dudes told stories at work. You're like, not like that. They don't. I mean, forget. I mean, for me, that's 20 years ago. I mean, forget today. <laughs> the stuff that, that you would or wouldn't talk about at work. Um, but the same thing applies to a lot of the friend groups. And, you know, if a guy has a family and has real problems and you're kind of a mess, he doesn't want to have time for your bullshit anymore because he has real things at home that he has to worry about when he crosses the threshold. And those things, that's why having a family can be like one of the greatest things, even though it's stressful, it's a real stress that matters. And it's the people you care the most about in your life where somebody who doesn't have that thinks their bullshit actually matters when it's like, no, none of this stuff really does. And as I get older, and if I'm talking about a person from the family perspective, it's like, I don't have enough time for you. I get sick of your shit. Like, how could I, how could I look at it any other way? Like, Hey, you know, my kids at practice today or didn't make the team or is going to have to stay back or whatever. Oh, you, you know, you, you, you left your, debit card out last night like i don't care i don't care about your stories anymore this isn't funny you ended up in a strip club before Ooh, cool like no one gives a fuck man like i got two kids at home and there are people that have a very hard time understanding the other group the guy the guy without the family has a very hard time understanding the other group uh I'll, i will tell you that for sure all right. I think that does it. All right. Life advice rr at gmail.com. All right. We come back three days a week, three Brasillo pods each week. And it's going to be mostly football, but we're not going to steer away from some of the authors that we were doing. Um, you know, it won't be the stretch like we had in August where I, I bounced for a bit, but we're still going to do some weird stuff. And then, you know, with the Simmons pod today, the, the horrifying start date of the NBA being like this camp shit's going to be opening up here in weeks is crazy. So we will make sure we have it all covered. Please subscribe. Uh, we have some great football guests planned, some regulars as well. So we're already kind of loaded up the first month of September. So we're really excited about it and a great plan. And, you know, NFL, we all know that that will be the priority. So that's going to be a lot of next week, even though I did probably a little bit more college football. I was just trying to balance it out before the season started up. So as always, appreciate it. And we'll talk to you on Monday. <laughs>